and welcome to the Let's Appreciate today for a very, very shocking uh, turn of events. Today we're actually going to be uh, Let's Appreciating MTV. Who would have thought it? Uh, some of you are too young to remember. Some of you are too young to remember, but there was a time when MTV actually showed music videos. There was also a time when MTV did good content. It was a long time ago. Most of, you, most of you weren't even an apple in your dad's eye at that point. Or a tingle in your mother's loins. But yes, there is. There was a time when they did make good content. And today we're actually going to be appreciating two of them. Because... Right, so first of all. If this stream goes down at any point. Just abandon ship. Because there, there is a chance that... Um, MTV's parent company will come for me for this. I just don't care. The other thing is a while ago, um, if you remember, uh, during the LGR Let's Appreciate, I mean, uh, there was a mention of a person called Fatality when he was putting together the early, two early to mid-2000s gaming PC, he had those Fatality NVIDIA cards. Well, he's actually going to be the subject of the first uh, video for today. So, yes, today we're going to be watching MTV's Real uh, True Life, I'm a Gamer, and MTV's True Life, I'm a Pro Wrestler. Now, hear me out, hear me out. Even though some of you may not like pro wrestling, or some of you just don't like pro wrestling, uh, or don't watch pro wrestling, don't look at this as a look at this more of a case study and the documentaries they're mini documentaries so look at it through the lens of learning about uh, pro wrestling rather than trying to enjoy pro, res pro wrestling or having you watch or making you want to watch pro wrestling think of it more educational about learning about it ra rather than anything else because in its core pro wrestling is kind of a fascinating thing Pro wrestling is a fascinating creature in of itself. So, yeah. That will be the second one we watch. The first one will be uh, I'm a Gamer. Now, let's get some love to the chat first. Hello, Blazer. What's good? What's up, Dyconius? Hey, Joseph. My God, man, stop changing your name. What's up, Mitch? Hey, Nurgle. I'm assuming he got his P. Uh, I doubt the. Now, if he's yelling, ah! He's probably not got his uh, electricity fixed. Hey, Amadeus, what's up, Dyconia? Oh, I said hi, Dyconia. What's up, Josta? Oh, Ian. Hello, Amy Love. Uh, what's up, Navigator? All right. All right. Y'all ready? Like I said, if, if the stream goes down, MTV got to me. Or their parent company got to me, then I probably won't be coming back because I've got no backup for this. Their day jobs with their over-the-top button mashing obsession. It is the lowest level position at FedEx. You are expected to stay there a maximum of six months. Uh, going on three and a half years. And what's in store for Billy? The world's ah, greatest player of Pac-Man. Billy Mitchell. Uh, world yet again. Billy Mitchell what got all of his records stricken from Twin Galaxies. Anybody. Oh, yeah. Put down your joystick. The answers are next on True Life by the Gamer. All right. First couple of things. One. The reason why I wanted to watch this one is because I remembered, I remembered back uh, in a conversation when we were talking about how um, gaming really doesn't have, we don't, as gamers, we don't necessarily uh, have historians or we don't have, we don't really archive our, our shit, basically. Like a lot of games get lost in the, um, we, a lot of games get lost in the shuffle. Um, unfortunately. And funny enough, in the world of gaming, there's only one place that holds all the records for, like, the best high scores and stuff like that, and it's Twin Galaxies. Bill and Mitchell recently got all of his shit fucking removed because he's a fucking fraud and a cheater. Allegedly. Allegedly. I, I don't want Bill and Mitchell trying to fucking sue my ass. 
Fuck you, Billy Mitchell. But he's kind of... But yeah, we don't... We don't remember our history that much. In a sense. We don't remember our history. Oh, you guys can hear me over this, right? That's uh, Street Fighter EX3. The fighting game they're playing is Street Fighter EX3. This is the main order of light right here. After our weekly humdrum life, we come here and live out our little virtual world and game it as a clan together. No, nope, that was PlayStation 2. We share a very large interest in video games, so we decided to team up. This rules! This is the way we live! My nickname comes from the fact that if you're on my team, that doesn't make you safe. There's a good chance you're gonna explode along with everybody else. You see all these games everywhere? If we go back up to my closet, you can see all my games just lined up. We've memorized all the plots, Pretty much. all the characters, almost every part. King of Fighters 2000 or 98 has 38 characters. I can name them all. And I can pretty much give you a background story on all of them. But, you know, and I only was in college for six weeks because I couldn't remember anything. Gamers is almost equal to fans, but it's just, but with our hobbies, it is an interactive hobby. Carrie, long shot. Uh, he is kind of the default leader. I'm not really sure if we actually have a leader, but if we had to pick one, I'd say it'd be him. It's now the it thing to be a gamer. Like, where 10 or, 10 or 15 years ago, it was like, are you playing games all day? What the heck are you doing? Yeah, wait till you see, this is- My legs are getting tired. <laughs> not this Asian. Jimmy Bo, a resident Asian, and better yet, the Asian. That's his nickname. I fucking love that. <laughs> And then there's John. It's all about the competition, okay? That's what I'm in it for, to hear people get pissed. Hatred's name is self-explanatory. If you spend five minutes with him, you'll get the feeling that he's just got a lot of angst. And he loves to talk smack. It's his thing. There's gonna be nothing but losers in here crying when I get off the stick. It's a very fitting name for him, let's just put it that way. It is 2000s. Fucking oh, God. Ah, two for one special. Love him. This is Stuart Stevens, better known as Ryuji Sakata. Stuart likes to stay behind the scenes. He's not really an attention seeker. And he doesn't know how to drop a stick shit. But he can play this game. He can play that game, but can't drop a stick shit. That's mm, Steel Battalion, I believe. D? D is his nickname. His real name is Dedrick. And a guy that big, we don't really make him come up with an actual online name. I've been a natural bodybuilder, I'd say, for about eight years. Anything that requires a sword or blunt object, I'm probably playing. That was first strike, I believe. This is where we all collectively live and dwell and, more importantly, game. You can see this is where most of the gaming goes on. The Good main living room. So we got four TVs currently hooked up in here. This is our kitchen, although it is rarely ever used for food. This is Leslie. That's our friend from the art college. We don't get a lot of girls over here. No, not a whole lot. And she's playing Kingdom Hearts. Uh, this is our main dietary supplement. There is a easy room for some other food, but that's not really important. <laughs> yeah, they all live. They they all live together in that place. Now, imagine the fucking electricity bill. Not good enough. I personally don't see how like. So many people could be so involved in just games. I mean, I like playing video games and all, but I think they need to get out more. <laughs> but we don't need to get out more. <laughs> you know what's out there, man? The world's scary. I don't want to go on there. Ah, oh, this Actually, guy. First, you know, when I first started getting into it, I saw these guys. I'm like, man, these guys are, are nerds. <laughs> I see their pictures on the website and stuff. I'm like, man, these guys, you got to be kidding me. People travel around for, for a video game. Now, now I'm the world champion. I travel anywhere they ask me to go. <laughs> right.
to this day, as cold as I, as I am with video games, to this fucking day, I have never fucking heard of this game. I haven't met anybody who even knows about this game. Yo, my plan is, is if I could ever make if I could ever make it big, my plan is to do something like that. Like just have a room dedicated to gaming and shit. And have just a bunch of people around, pizza, Pepsi, shit like that, just fun. Playing Golden Tee in college, um, just you know, just messing around with it, and I liked it. So I started playing it every once in a while with some buddies. You know, it was just kind of like a hobby back then, and I got pretty good at it. Here I am, the world champion. My dream to play on the PGA Tour is very simple. I mean, I, I love the game of golf. I want to be known as one of the best it in the world. So you know Golden T. Wow. If I thought I could play Tiger Woods head to head and beat him, I'd tell you, yeah. Because if I wasn't confident and I didn't think I could, I'd be wasting my time. Yeah, this dude at one point was the world just, champion. You know, just trying to find some sponsorship and uh, make a run at some of the mini tours right now. And hopefully in, uh, in a few years be playing with the big boys, being called one of the big boys. I know I'm ready. It's just, it's a matter of executing now. I don't think this guy ever made pro. I believe this dude never made pro. Best one of the day right there. I'm at the golf till sometime around five o'clock most of the time. So for me, it's kind of like a job. Then I'm off to the bar and I play Golden Tee for a few hours and have a few beverages, play a few games, hang out with the friends. Yeah, he's apparently he was apparently the Golden Tee World Champion at one point. You too. You too. I'll grab a beer if you want one. I think I will. Get the games going. I've won a lot more than I've put into this game. The past two years in live events alone, I've probably brought in close to 55 or 60,000. Overall, you throw in the online tournaments, I'm pushing the $100,000 mark. And then you throw in gambling winnings and I'm pushing the $150,000 mark. So. That's what I'm all about right now is playing this game, making some money, and uh, getting ready for the next step. So does the machine look like that, Dicornius? Good warm-up games, good warm-ups. Now we're off to OTOs, officials timeout. Going to be a bunch of people out there tonight looking to... Uh, Pad the wallet a little more. And here's our main guy, Fatality. Oh, facial. Like this dude, like to give you, to give you guys context for how big Fatality was back in the early to mid 2000s. Think of like, the he would be the equivalent to like the top Fortnite player right now. That'd be a good fucking that would be a good test. But like that's that's what fatality was back in the day. He was the he was the guy. He was the guy in in the Unreal tournament scene. He won a bunch of other tournaments as well. Uh, give me a minute. Let me give you the backstory on how good he was. Because I feel again, it's the Fatality is one of those guys who really was a pioneer of esports. And again, I don't feel that this is kind of what I'm talking about. About we don't keep our own history. Like if there was a if there was a video if there was a video game a Hall of Fame. Fatality for me would be in there already. Does that if that makes sense? Like that's 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 where he would be. I just wanna wait. 
Oh, holy shit, he streams? Yeah, and he also streams, right? He also streams as well. Apparently, Fatality also streams. So he, he's in the streaming as well. Uh, I think the last, yeah, the last time he streamed was last month. But yeah, he, he streams as well. Yeah. I, I believe this is uh, Fatality's account. I, b I believe that is the same, uh, he is the same dude. But like, just, again, just, he's 40 years, yeah, Fatality is 40 years old. The owner of his own company, Fatality Inc. This is his record, by the way. 2000, first place in Quake Free Arena. Two, again, 2000, first place. Like, Alien vs. Predator, first place. Unreal Time in 2003, first place. In fact, I'm pretty fucking sure this, this is the one we're going to be watching. Right, so this, this right here, this is actually the tournament that you're going to be seeing him at in this video. So, spoiler alert, he won. But he was going strong until 2005. Like, this dude had a fucking five-year fucking dominating streak in Painkiller, Doom 3, um, Unreal Tournament, Alien vs. Predator 2, 2, and Quick Free Arena. This, this is kind of what I'm talking about. Guy, guys like Fatality have just been forgotten. These guys are the guys who paved the fucking road. For guys like, uh, for guys uh, of the modern day. This is uh, basically where I live now. Um, I just moved here about maybe like three or four months ago, and uh, I'm renting out the basement for my parents. Well, basically, a professional gamer is a person who actually makes a living at playing the game. I've been able to do that for the last three years now and live solely from my income from gaming. I, mean, I estimate the total that I've won from playing video games, uh, probably around $150,000. It's uh, right around there. I mean, with prizes and, you know, cars and stuff I've won and things like that. It's pretty cool. I really want to make a living out of this, and so you know, I have not. my life. train for an event i usually go to wherever the event's gonna be held at and then train no no i ain't i know that but that's what i'm talking about this, this San antonio online this, this is pretty pre game for the main event this is kind of what i'm talking about though iron is when i talk about we don't remember we don't remember those who like uh, we don't remember a lot of people or or we don't remember a lot of people who help pave the way for like how big gaming is right now Again, Fatality was so big, he got his he got his face and name on an NVIDIA GPU, was sponsored by them, I believe, um, owns his own goddamn company and still going today. I pretty much just asked him if he wanted to come down. It's pretty fun to watch him play because I can play hey, exactly how he moves and shoots and stuff like that and get a... Like a better feel for it myself helps me out a little bit too. When someone says like fatalities at uh, someone's house or do you like sleep on my couch or something like that, you know, uh, no one believes. One of our friends keeps sending me messages saying that he doesn't believe us that John's over here, so I'm gonna go ahead and hook up my webcam and take oh, a picture. <laughs> John's quite the celebrity. <laughs> Before tournament, usually I train eight, ten hours, twelve. Man, look at that set up and that food on as well. That, just like a profession. I mean, I used to be so diverse. I, mean, I played all the sports in the world, and I, I got tired of being, uh, you know, way above average, but never being the best at something. Basically, the game is a, it's a first-person shooter where you basically walk around a 3D world. And you pick up different weapons throughout the map. And this is the machine gun. And this is the bio rifle. There's all kinds of guns. Man, we were still using those in my high school. Match. 
They basically whoever has the most kills at the end of the game would win. I mean, if you're gonna be the best at anything, it has to be your life. And any of these actors who are you know, musicians or these uh, professional athletes, they live and breathe what they do. And uh, I, I do the same. I have not Marquis. I'm often asked by people, you know, somebody wants to be- Okay, Billy Mitchell, ladies and gentlemen, listen to everything Billy Mitchell says and you will fucking hate him even more. Like, you will. Nothing he says is nice or good. He is a fucking, he's an a, a <clears throat> legend sociopath. I'm often asked by people, you know, if somebody wants to become a world champion, what do they do? And the very first bit of advice I give them is forget it. <laughs> I say, um, you don't become a world champion, it's, it's in your DNA. In 1999, there was a race, there was a quest for what they called the holy grail of video games. Whoever could do a perfect game on Pac-Man. That start to finish, never miss a dot, never miss an energizer, never miss a prize, never miss a blue man. 256 screens, then you would achieve a perfect game. And on July 3rd, after six hours of play and not losing a single man, became the first person that ever did a perfect game on Pac-Man. In the early 1980s, video games were all the rage. I mean, arcades were everywhere. Whenever we went somewhere, it was the equivalent of a rock band showing up. Imagine the publicity of the greatest obsession in the world at the time, video games. And supposedly the best players in the world were coming. They were coming to your town. It was, uh, it was something where there were groupies. It was incredible. It was everywhere I went. I'll walk somewhere. People say, hey, Pac-Man. I'll say, that's Mr. Pac-Man to you. It brought me more media uh -huh, attention sure. than I had imagined. I don't think there was a network that didn't call me. After 19 years, a video arcade classic has finally been conquered. I always wanted to do something that was unparalleled. Yes. Something unequivocal. Also, this, uh, so... Uh, I think if you want to know more about Bill Mitchell, because I believe Bill Mitchell goes, what? Uh, not Bill Mitchell, sorry. Yeah, if you want to know more about Bill Mitchell, there's a dude called um Carl something. Hold on, give me a minute. I need to find his name. Uh, give me a second. Carl Jobs. That's it. Carl Jobs. He he pretty much does a whole breakdown. This so Billy Billy likes to talk about this picture, how he was given the award uh for the best Pac-Man game. That's actually incorrect. This this whole picture was completely falsified. Uh it was th this whole picture was set up under false pretenses. And they just liked he just likes to use that. Um also uh, not to, uh, this is going to colour some opinions, but there was a YouTuber called Apollo Legend. Uh, I, I say used to because unfortunately he committed suicide. Um, and pretty much, uh, pretty much fluster. And, well, Billy Mitchell tried to sue him into a fucking oblivion. And Apollo had to, uh, had to settle out of court, and it is believed that the whole Billy Mitchell lawsuit situation was a contributing factor to Apollo Legend's suicide. He has also threatened to to sue Carl Jobs as well, because Carl Jobs has just been has. Uh, gone over all the evidence and shit. Cause also this, this, this. I dare not even fucking call him a man. This individual, right here, um, is also uh, is also suing Twin Galaxies after Twin Galaxy and its new owner came to the conclusion that Billy Mitchell's uh, uh world records, alleged world records, were faked by using um, um, 
uh, different boards, different arcade boards. So, yes, if you say any bad thing about Billy Mitchell, he will try and sue you. I was asked by a reporter. So have you done it? Not yet. Watch this, 20. Magically turn into about seven of them. Oh no, there, no, there is, there is some appreciates. We're more appreciating, again, we're more appreciating the effort that went into this documentary. And plus, we're definitely appreciating Fatality. Right now, the most important thing for me right now is just to practice a lot, um, find great, good competition, and just uh, play 8, 12 hours a day or more, you know, just play, 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 and just get the game down so well that you can just, it's pretty much like, you know, it's like walking almost. And there were two, there were a bunch of people in this we can appreciate. How's it going? Hey, you never know who's going to show up in the doors. They call up friends, their friends call up friends and say, hey, you know, Tally's in town and stuff. That and was it, Daclonius. I'll put up a fight for sure. It'll be decent. Are you ready? Yeah. Don't get any better than watching these two play. Okay, no. team is the winner! <laughs> that was a good game. <laughs> I think his aim is ungodly and he's cheating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's definitely better than I am. <sighs> Alright. Are you ready? Yeah. Nice little porterhouse tonight. Get home. Courtney and I met through this game, through Golden Tee. Uh, she works for the company. She Thank you, Tyler. Thank you very there. much. It's already growing back, and I had it done on Thursday. But I had no clue how big but it was. It's rough. It's sandpaper. We met two years ago, and uh, we've been happy ever since. I've got a girlfriend who supports me in everything I do, and we are... Uh, gonna be engaged very soon it's like well if i win the world championships i'm gonna buy you a ring well the world championships come and gone he won we're supposed to go on vacation over valentine's day i thought that was gonna be it but now being the world champion he has to make an appearance so what can i say i think i'm gonna be 30. i do believe that oh god i'm not gonna do that I got about a hundo in the wallet. We'll see what I uh, come out with when we leave. We got about 12 guys. We're all throwing 20 bucks in the pot. We're gonna get a little tournament going. Thank you very much. Watch this 20 magically turn into about seven of them. Remember what he just said. The first six months, I would just sit and watch him. Got a little tedious, a little boring sitting there. Finally, I decided I would learn how to play. We have a Getting better. better. Not as good as him, but... You know, we're playing $200 for the winner of this little tournament, 70 per second. So, you know, first or second, you're going to basically pay for the night of, uh, of play. It's like probably going to be myself, and Jay. Not really, and Joseph. And no, no, that, that's absolutely incorrect. Do, but that's four really, really good players. Four of the top 50 in the country. So it should get pretty interesting here in a little while. You'll see why. I won. <laughs> I beat wet. <laughs> Semifinals. Now we're talking serious golf. 
Mm, serious goal. Good God. The man who taught me this game. This is my teacher, my mentor right here. This guy. Okay. I figure I got about a 20% chance, one in five. That dude looks like he plays golf. He is No. You gotta hang it out. Damn it, Greg. See, if I'm playing for money, I don't get loaded. It ruins my inhibition. Great shot, Jay. What a shot. Great Down two strokes, two to play. Not good. Not good. Kind of bumming. Two hours later. Sensei J. in the morning he does whatever he has to do to make money so it's not about the money oh the liar it's not it's a sport no it's about hanging out with it, it is it is but when it comes to being two o'clock in the morning it's about the money <laughs> man you know it's the early 2000s when they're smoking night right there a little disappointed get that many guys I expect to make more than came in with a hundred I'm leaving with uh, 140 after paying the tab and everything so I still made he, wa he walked away with 140 you can see it in his eyes in his joints how tired he is yes flutter it is banding you you cannot you cannot smoke in bars I'm not on the same quarter, I'm on the same man. <laughs> he just has to correct him. Uh. Ricky's was actually built in 1955. My father acquired it in 1974. Uh, we're here seven days a week. The whole family's involved in the business, and it's done real good for us. It's Jesus. also been a blessing to me in video games because uh, this is where I got my start. You know the worst thing is, I'm not. Personality that strive for perfection. The worst thing is, I'm I'm not. I'm sh I'm c I'm sure Billy is a f is a good fucking Pac-Man player. I would never take that away from him. I'm sure he's a very good fucking player, but he's not the best. Pac-Man carved out a part of my personality that strived for perfection, that strived to be the absolute best that I could possibly be. to look at myself and I had to realize very unhappily that I couldn't just play video games forever that I had to do something else our family business was the restaurants it was chicken wings it was hot sauce and that same obsession that I had in the world of video games now transcended over into the business world I became obsessed with the idea that I would know more about chicken wings more about hot sauce than anybody in the world. I lived and breathed it every day, just like I did video games. Who the fuck does this? You'll see what I mean. When I'm in the store, I'm always looking at the placement on the shelf. It's sort of a cruel and vicious world. 
like the video game world. There's always somebody who's trying to bump you aside and you sort of fight fire with fire. You go in and you push for a little more space for yourself and uh, you sort of push the guy around a little. And unfortunately, when your back is turned, he's doing the same thing to you. It's a cat fight to stay on top. I never realized that a real work in the world and video game work, uh, they'd be so similar, or at least similar in nature. Who does that? He's going into a store that he does not own and he's moving other people's products aside to give himself more shelf space. Who fucking does that? I always tell myself that if I can do in the business world what I can do in the arcade, then the situation will always go our way. On a typical weekday, I myself and usually Carrie will awaken sometime around three or four in the afternoon. This being Memphis, I would have to say over half the city is probably employed by FedEx because our corporate headquarters is here, our main hub is here. This is where the majority of us work. Is that true? Like over half of Memphis is 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 employed by FedEx? Is that true? I know this is like mid two thousands, but but is that still a thing? Like half of Memphis, Tennessee is is employed by FedEx. We'll awaken sometime around three or four in the afternoon. This being Memphis, I would have to say over half the city is probably employed by FedEx because our corporate headquarters is here, our main hub is here. This is where the majority of us work. I spend my nights surrounded by these big metal things you see here. I go inside them and take boxes out. This is the entry level position. It is the lowest level position at FedEx. You are expected to stay there a maximum of six months. Going on three and a half years. All the killer. Working at FedEx affords me a very, very strange lifestyle. Going to work. Uh, that's part of my day. Other than sometimes I call I it a, my head on the toilet. That's pretty good too. I call the Duke the, a, a deadly a strange, weapon. Most people, we go in at about 10 p.m. and we're usually home by about 5 a.m. We usually go to sleep when the sun comes up. So I actually prefer night to day anyway. Uh, that, I it's believe it's Devil May Cry too. It's not that bad once you get used to it. That is Devil May Cry too. The games are pretty much on 24-7. Half of us go to work at night, the other half play at night. Half of them go to work during the day, the other half play at day. In real life, you can't really control what's going on. In video games, you can control which way the adventure goes, you can control which way these people's lives are lived. What I mean That's is- That's Vampire the Mask- That's Vampire the, the Masquerade, right? I'm pretty fucking sure that is Vampire the Masquerade. Or I might just be completely fucking wrong. Goes and what is that? Which way these people's lives are lived. What I mean is, you can be a hero. You can actually get the feeling that comes from being a hero. I mean, it's just a simulation, but it's still better than nothing. It's a form of escape, but it's it's kind of a form of indulgence at the same time. I mean, it's just uh, a fantasy thing. I will turn around and say, I understand video games being your being your passion. I understand. Oh, it was Buffy the Vampire Slayer, thank you. I never played the Buffy one. This goes a bit too far. This officially hits this officially hits the point where I say, dude, fucking priorities. Okay. Those all money's breaks the game. And this is his work uniform. He's actually here on lunch. He functions on the bare minimum amount of sleep that a human being can possibly get by on. You can see it in his eyes, in his joints, how tired he is. I'd also like to point out, get a fucking game, boy. He's supposed to be back at 4.15pm. It's nearly 5! Holy... Make it 45 minutes late. By the way, Joseph, you mentioned this was before tournaments were a thing. Here you go. The Cyber Olympic Professional League Winter Tournament. It's all paid for by the people already. Yeah. I am 
So who do you think your main rivals will be in this tournament? American players, European players? I have, I have really have no idea. Have you played against any of the, uh, the Swedish and German guys? No, no, not no one yet. No one yet? Yeah, yeah. no one. Where are you guys coming from? Um, I just came from San Antonio, but I live in Kansas City. Just practicing. You guys gonna win this tournament? Yeah, well, it's an individual contest, so I have to win it. Oh, really? <laughs> uh, but I just gotta practice and, uh... You going home with the big money? Yeah, 10 grand if All right. I win first place. Yeah, he retired from... He retired from professional play, but he still, he still games and streams to this day. Okay, you guys might be able to hear it when I'm talking, but there is like a fuck ton of fireworks going off. Tiger smooth for uh, good luck. Been taking it to every tournament I've been going to for the past uh, three plus years now. And uh, it always sits up from top, from top of my monitor. People like look at it and they recognize that's Fatality's computer. It's a good luck charm. Everyone, everyone knows about it. it. It comes in handy. When I go into this thing, I have the whole package and then some. And I love playing against someone and being pressured to win. And when I'm pressured to win, that's when I play my best game. Jonathan Fatality Wendell, quite possibly the most famous gamer in the world. Gamer.tv. Right? Yeah, it's been about almost three years now. I think the chances are, are pretty good that I'm gonna win. And these are some of the best, these are the best plays in the world. In fact, oh for God's sake. Right, yeah. Sorry, guys. I'm gonna need to be right back. I need to go. To, I need. I need to go to the restroom. Fuck's sake. We'll limit it to th to this one again. If you guys want to watch the other one, we'll watch the other one. But we're gonna limit it to this one today, given all the pausing and everything. But I need. I'm, I need to be right back. I'm so sorry.
Sorry about that, guys. I needed to go and take a Billy Mitchell. Like, I really needed to take a Billy Mitchell. I apologize. Okay, man. Good game. Okay. Hey. How you doing, man? <laughs> I did? Yeah, really good. Oh, you did what you could. You, by the way, you can see the contrast between- you're about to see the serious contrast between these two. Like, the- the- obviously, the Unreal Tournament, uh... Tournament- the, yeah, the Unreal Tournament 2003 tournament that's going on with Fatality, and then Greg's Golden Tee Golf Tournament. Alright man, we're here in Memphis. Today, qualifying round, goal today is just pretty much don't make any major mistakes. We had 9,000 hour purse with about probably 3,500 to first place. Good money for the winner. Good money if we make top three. And that's always the goal, so it's showtime. You got something plus. Mission accomplished. Be ready for match play tomorrow. You gotta bring the game tomorrow or we'll go home early. Carve up, baby! Yeah. Yeah, buddy. Okay, man, I'm too nervous, yeah. <laughs> By the way, you're about to see the... And this dude's still going. Got practice. Remember when those hats were a thing? Practice, 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 practice. Yeah, like... And if you're not practicing, you should be practicing. This is why. This is why you don't shit talk. It's the only way you can number one. You you shit talk after you win. Practice, practice, practice. Liquor, smoke, and video games are every woman's dream. You can find it here. Not here, but later. How ironic is this? We travel all the way to Memphis. First round, I gotta play Lance. So one bad thing about this, you know, play your friends, you feel bad if you beat Which them. Which Venus? You obviously feel bad if you lose. I guess it's kind of like a lose-lose situation. But he's ready, I'm ready. Probably have a pretty good match. Good luck there. All right. You're up. If they're tired or he's got lead, it's okay. He gets down, and then I get worried. <laughs> Good shot, Lance. Go in. Hey. I think I probably do get more nervous just because I have no control over what's going on. You know, he's the one up there playing. He's chat. the one that can control his destiny. And I just have to sit there and watch what happens. <laughs> Right, come on. Two holes to play and he's behind, so.
See, uh, Greg goes to the loser's bracket, I believe. Good matches, Frank. Gotta go again. Gotta go again. on a public uh, forum that he was going to abuse John and he said that good luck to John staying in the positive figures. Uh, we were at Hooters last... You hear that shit? It did infinite dinks. The, the, the key for him to win is to play half as good as he normally does. And that he is going to abuse John, who is fatality. He said this on his public forum. He's going to abuse fatality and good luck staying in the positives. Last night, Infinite was talking all this stuff about how he's John staying in the positive figures. Uh, we were at Hooters last night, and Infinite was talking all this stuff about how he's going to win. And I'm like, dude, there's no way you're going to beat fatality. So he said, all right, man, if I beat fatality, I can kick you in the nuts. I'm like, right on, my nuts are safe. One of my favorite things to do ever is prove people wrong. When someone says I can't beat this guy, saying he's the best in the world now, if you're going to try to doubt me and you're going to say I can't do something, I'll make sure I'm there to prove you wrong. And he got destroyed. The guy got control. What can you do about it, man? That was insane. So tomorrow, moving on to the finals for ten thousand so dollars. And he just got fucking destroyed. Good job, man. My God. That's why you save your trash talking after you won. Because dead men can't talk. Funny enough, I used to play online just like that. But when I used to smoke, I used to actually have a cigarette in my mouth and smoke while I'm playing, so I've got both hands on like this. So the cigarette would be in my mouth like this. Hey, I really like, hey, I really like this. It's a lot more difficult than it looks. I kid you not, if, if you've ever been a smoker, and you try that, it takes practice. I'm not saying that you should smoke, but you know, you 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 look you in your own you run your own lives. Not me. Good job, man. Yeah, it was ugly. It was ugly. Good job. Good job. And Greg's out. Probably take a break for a little while. This was just a wake-up call for me, I guess. I just, as you can tell, I'm just, I'm really disappointed about the way I played today. And I guess just, you know, we just don't win them all. <laughs> right there. But not yet engaged. That 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 disappointment you saw in his face. That's how I feel every time I fail at a game. No joke. Shortly after doing the perfect game, I sort of stood in my mind and I wondered what it was or what I would do that's gonna top that. I had to 
begin to come up with something in my mind in a video game world that would be bigger and greater, that would draw more attention, more fame. I haven't shared the fact that I'm preparing for something with very many people. What it is I actually plan on doing, I haven't shared with anybody. I haven't even talked in my sleep about it. But what it is that I'm going to do will be a final, final chapter in the world of competitive video game playing for me. And if it happens, the world will know more than they knew of the perfect Pac-Man game. We'll see. FedEx crew. I love that. The order of light FedEx now, division. 405 AM. That's that's AM. And I've just come home from work. Uh, Jimmy is still up. He has been up this entire time since he got back from work at I'm guessing somewhere around 10. He's been playing Bitter Alive beach volleyball for six hours. How can you play Dead or Alive beach volleyball for fucking six hours? future is very difficult for me to envision. I, I believe I need to look into it, but I think that was the Donkey Kong one. I think that was the Donkey Kong one. I'd like to say I'd not be at FedEx, that I'd be doing something more important, more dream-oriented, but I can't say that for sure. I know for certain that I'll still be playing games. I'm not going to give that up. That's a, that's a part of me. It's a part of my life. I game, therefore I am. It's the only thing I've really had a non-stop interest in, and one of the only things I've ever really been good at, so... Just remember, gaming's not an addiction, it's a lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> John Sada playing a video game right now. Yeah, so this is a CPL, the one that I showed you guys that he won. He, he won this. You're about to see it. 2005. Look, yeah, you too, man. That awkward small talk. There they are, there they are, they go. What a nice atomic blast. Oh, fatality with a nice shot. One sequence right now. Score 2 0. Fatality. Fatality waiting for the double damage. There it is. He's controlling this extremely, extremely well. Woo! Come on! Yes! Man, good game, man. <laughs> Great game. Gosh. You had to make it close. Why'd you have to do that? <laughs> nice. Yeah, good game, man. Good game. How do you feel about that? It's awesome. You know, uh, so many, so many people out there saying I couldn't do it, couldn't do it. You know, and uh, two months of practice and stuff. And look at me, I'm number one. Hey, Dad. Oh, it was tough again, but uh, yeah, I won again. Uh, Ten thousand dollars. Well, yeah, man, he worked his ass off yeah, to get that. Awesome. And I would just like to point to everybody. Give me a minute. Just like to point out. Fatality Inc. is still a thing. They even organize events. In uh, Rainbow Rainbow Six Siege containment event, 
Overwatch League. They, they, yeah, they do events. New website coming soon. They got a YouTube channel. Fatality has a YouTube channel as well. I think he's still going. Looks like he's still got it, too. Man, look at that control bunny hop hopping, man. Nice. And the fucker ain't changed much either, look. Fucking fatality has not changed whatso fucking ever. But yeah, dude's still, dude's still going. Fuck, he was playing Apex, it was an Apex video. Dude, his aim is still fucking godlike. Game control. Barely a fucking wasted shot. Fuck no. Dude, barely a wasted shot. Ah, he's got my favorite gun. Right, nah, mad respect to fatality. Oh, I gotta see how he handles this. Dude! Oh my! Oh my fucking god, man! The dude's still fucking great! He's long shotting with the fucking peacekeeper. He fucking got it. Holy shit. No, this is Apex Legends. Dude, fucking fatality still got it, guys. And this is him over 16 years ago. Think about that. This is like yeah, that's my good luck charm. And, uh, na the name is, uh, Smoo. S-M-U. Short for smooth. So. Think on that. Fuck it. Just think on that. That is Fatality in 2005. That is... This is Fatality in 2000... Let's go! <laughs> this is Fatality in 2021. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about when I turn around and say, like, legends like this guy should never be forgotten. Like, this, this is why if I, if I was to run a hypothetical, like, game, video game a Hall of Fame, why Fatality would, or would still be in it? Or would be in it? 16 years on, he's still good. Last of that squad. Like, his... His movement tracking is in, is on point. Ah, the 
is super low. I found it. You could raise me up here probably. That fucking control. It's fucking insane. It, it it truly fucking is insane. This is why guys like this should never be fucking forgotten. Seriously. Alright. So I got a question. Do you guys want to watch one more? Or do you think we should leave it there? I'm down to watch another one of you guys are. I leave this entirely in your hands. We could leave it at this one and I can name this... Uh, true life. I am a gamer, and then we can watch. Um, and we can watch the other one some of the time, or we can watch both, or we can watch the new, the other one as well. What do you guys want to do? I got one for leave, one for one more. The other one is a uh, uh, true life. Uh, I'm a pro wrestler. Because the the other one, again, the other one, the reason why I say with the other one, you don't need to be a fan. Because it's, it, again, like this one, it's more of an introduction as well as learning about the business. Like the other one's more about learning about it than, you know, trying to make you like it. Because believe me, there's, there is one section of the story that is really fucking sad. That... All right, Forza. All right, we'll watch. We'll watch one more. Is the pop culture surprise story of the late '90s, and with 35 million people watching them on TV each week, wrestlers are now some of the most famous people in the world. But who are they really? I mean, I don't think people realize what it is that we actually Hold do. Up. On this edition of True Life, we'll find. Hold on, give me a minute. I know there's a fucking better version of that one out there. Give me a second. I know for a fact that there is a better version of that out there. One second. Uh, actually, I think that might be the better qual the best quality one, unfortunately. There was another one I was planning on watching, but I can't find a full version of it anymore. Um, we have to deal with this quality. Sorry. And out. We'll go behind the scenes with the first couple of the WWF, Triple H, and China. We'll experience life after the glamour is gone, as former champion Tony Atlas works the small towns struggling to survive. And though they're fighting, maybe staged. One, two, three. <laughs> we'll take you to wrestling school where the pain is definitely real. We'll go inside their battered heads next on True Life, I Am a Pro Wrestler. Okay, no, sorry. This is bugging me. This is not the version I watched. Because I watched these prior. 
I've watched these prior because I wanted to make sure I could get them. That's not the fucking version that I've watched, and that is really fucking bugging me right now. Pop culture Got it. Story of the late Got it. 90s. And with 35 million old. There you go, you can tell the quality is a little I mean, better. I think people realize what it is that we actually do. On this edition of True Life, we'll find out. We'll go behind the scenes with the first couple of the WWF, Triple H, and China. We'll experience life after the glamour is gone, as former champion Tony Atlas works the small towns struggling to survive. And though their fighting may be staged, one, two, three. <laughs> We'll take you to wrestling school where the pain is definitely real. We'll go inside their battered heads next on True Life, I Am a Pro Wrestler. So yeah, like I said, think more of this as being educated in in pro wrestling and the, in, and the workings of it rather than trying to make you like it. The women. <laughs> the sheer violence, mainly. Oh, the guys. They're just great. I mean, they're the most creative, exciting people to be with in the world. The people, the people bring it in. Even if I'm, you know, feeling exhausted or I'm just not into it. And that's why you I took your chin, Porter. Totally, I just like suck all their energy and I'm just like, woo. <laughs> I love attention. Maybe a little love for pain. It's almost exhilarating to do it. it it's fun. I just like to get in and fight and kill and maim and destroy. See my butt. I just love it. So yeah, this was done around the 90s, and it's like the peak. The Arena. I guarantee you, China. Like 1999. For me, there's no better feeling in the world. This place is completely sold out, and every son of a bitch in here was on his feet and never sat down once. That's what it's about for us, for the two of us, is to go out there and do that to these people. That, that's the shot for us, you know what I mean? That's what we gotta have. I get depressed thinking about you know what I had let go of them trunks Hogan you growing up you growing up you on top of the head now well there you go boom you was gonna go you could have made it easy on yourself huh? here's one for making things hard for me boom give you another one wow yeah. Matthew? I got a story about this guy. Matt? Matthew? Come on, you gotta get up. What? We have to leave now. Let's go. What? Let's go. Should have went to bed earlier. Come on, Matt. Matt. No. Matthew, come on. Get up. Matthew, get up. Okay, Matt, get up. Oh. Okay, get out. Get out of bed. Come on. Uh, what hap what happens to Matt? I always loved wrestling. I love how they the characters, all of them, the bad guys, the good guys. So to me, if I did anything else, I would be unhappy. And I've tried so many stupid little things. I've tried to get a psych degree, like for psychology. I tried to get a business degree for business. Um, I've tried to sign up to go to Fireman Academy, uh, Police Academy. I mean, I've actually done crazy sh I, I would take my dad's MasterCard and say, come on, give me your MasterCard, I want to go sign up for school. I would <laughs> Party, which, uh, I've done that like six or seven times. Now, hopefully, I will be a professional wrestler, as long as I don't get hurt. And I think I'll be the best. And in, in fact, I am gonna be the best professional wrestler. Yeah. Got it. <sighs> yeah, how it ends for Matt, you wouldn't expect. 
Kept the training up. Okay. That was all that I had left. All my money gone, fame gone, everything gone. Only thing I've got left is my strength and size. So I try to hold on to that little bit from the past, you know? I was thinking about, like, my first match, because I would be, like, coming out and have them eyes. Like, the crazy eyes. Depends. I don't know what character I'm going to use, but them eyes always... I mean, if you watch the greats, the greats always get the eyes going, like Hogan. Hogan, when he gets mad, he'll go, you know, go. So, for me, I, I like the... I'll get, like, the stone jaw, and then I'll get the eyes. This dude, that dude is the typical greasy Italian stereotype you hear about. Do is larger than life. There's thousands of cameras everywhere. There's thousands of fans everywhere. I mean, this is the big show. I mean, when, when you're here, it's, it's, it's the big time, and everything about it is big time. When you're a big star, you work a lot more. When you're a big star, you're in the main events. When you're a bigger star, you're treated differently. Sets you apart. I have. I've watched a number of them. Crazy person, either. Depressing. Like you normally do. I want to be the man. Uh, I want everybody to know who I am. The glamour and the glitz to be able to get off a plane and somebody know who you are. That's what I want. I want to be known. Everybody wishes that they had a job that... Hey look, it's the former mayor of Memphis, Jesse Ventura. My job, I love what I do, I love being a celebrity. Oh, what happened to Steve? My goal at this point is to be the WWF champion. And uh, that means that you're the best in this business. It means that you're the... By the way, this is around the time WCW was still around, by the way. Just so everybody knows. Some poke shots, man. All I had to have for on the day of the show is just one meal. Voila. I got $1,500 my first week in professional wrestling. I got paid on a Monday, and I was broke Wednesday. That's how fast money just went right through my hand. Boom. Oh, From yeah. Minnesota, sorry. To 1985, I made over $100,000 each year. But it's all gone. I spent every penny of it. I figured the bubble would never burst. The kids always want pictures. So you can't disappoint the kiddies. Okay, who the first one to? I tell to. To Joe? Yeah. Yeah, even though I'm not a big star in professional wrestling no more, I still love when the people cheer and holler USA, USA, USA. That really make me feel good. You know, at the beginning, you could kind of lock up with me. It wasn't his fault. It wasn't his fault. Give me a hip toss. Then I give you the hip toss. And yes, to anybody confused and anybody who knows their pro wrestling, that is Gene Snitsky. Take a bump, you get right up. You give you another hip toss. Come back, I give you the slam. <laughs> back in like 1999-2000. That's the clothesline. I've been described as a drill sergeant, as a taskmaster, as, uh, you know, and I, I guess that's true. A lot of these kids have a problem with being able to eat properly or to train properly or to show up on time. We'll be a little late if that's all right. You don't care, do you? Sometimes you have to be harsh. <laughs> you have to live it. You have to eat it, breathe it, sleep it. That has to be it's the overwhelming, consuming thing in your life. But I'm not going to look at it like it's going to be no junk food. Yep, he's it's working the indie circuit. As right now, I'm going to cut back on my junk food. Of like, I'm not going to eat no candy bars. Or maybe one or two. A couple Swedish fish. I can't, I can't stop eating Swedish fish. But if he wants me to, I will. I mean, that's what I have to do. That's the price of fame and fortune and millions and millions of fans. 
is fucking it. You... Again, I know what happens to all of them. So... what it is that we actually do. The part that we're in the ring is not really where the work is. The work is traveling 250 days out of the year, trying to keep your body in shape, you know, trying to deal with life outside the ring. It's a lot of work. We do this all the time, and it's something we do 24-7. It's not just your work anymore. Toronto, work Sky Dome, back to Buffalo, good night's rest, have the pay-per-view in Buffalo, right. and from there we go to Cleveland. Yeah. They're on the road. This is Triple H from the World Wrestling Federation. All right, Matt, take your t-shirt off. <laughs> on the road, 300 days again. Well, you could be worse. 20.9% body fat. Is that bad? That's bad. The 20.9%. The average male should be around 15. It means you're carrying 40.54 pounds of body fat. All of our characters are a little bit of ourselves. China is a powerful, strong woman. She's attractive, and she holds her own in a male-dominated environment. Yeah, this is this is China before she got when she got a little work done. But I have a nice body, and that I'm nice to look at. But I never wanted that to be my sole purpose. I think that women as a whole could do so much better than that. And it really annoys me when that's the only worth that's given to them. I'm going to start you off the rope. The main thing we're going to teach you is how to break your fall. Without this is going to get ports of PTSD. Back, like, again, it's like a breaststroke. Fall. fall on your shoulders. Fall. Tuck your chin. Okay. Your hands are hitting first. Yeah, you're, uh -huh. yeah. So try again. Sit. <clears throat> see where you're at now? Okay, bend. That's better. Try get more comfortable. Yeah, yeah, try it again. Yeah. A lot of this is just repetition. Good. And the other thing you're going to hear me say a million times is learn to control your body. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. What you're missing, what you are missing as far as context there is, ladies and gentlemen, is when when they're hip tossing them or um or snap marrying them like that. You want to know what you're missing? Is them doing it? 50 other times because what they what they do and you'll see it later actually you'll see it later they knock you they they um they hip toss you down which is this hold on okay that is a i think that's a snap man they hip toss you you land you get up you walk to the dude you take another you get up rinse and repeat about 50 goddamn fucking times Just like the ring, people think, oh, it's so springy and bouncy, it's so much fun. But let me assure you, when you get slammed on it, you get dumped on it, you get dropped on it, it hurts and hurts and it keeps hurting. It doesn't, you don't get used to it. You never get used to it. You go out and you do it and then you come back in the locker room and it's like, ah, oh, damn, that was great. Okay. Beautiful. Sometimes you come back and you go, God damn, that was great. Five minutes after your adrenaline shuts down, you can't stand up. Beautiful. 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 Yes! Beautiful, baby. Every single night, it's a different city. And every single night, every ass in those seats expects they want the absolute best. They couldn't give a crap less what you were the night before or what you did at the pay-per-view. It doesn't matter. You gotta be okay, just so everybody is aware. 
This is... Give me a second. I want to show you what a wrestling ring is. Or what it's made of. So, typically, a wrestling mat, a wrestling ring, is made of a large structure. Uh, here you go. Uh, hold on. It's typically made of a large structure beam like that. Then they apply big giant plywood underneath, big giant rows of, uh, wood underneath it as as yeah there you go there's there's the ring co composition then they add uh the hard the hardwood underneath it then they add like a you know you know gym mats you know those really thin gym mats like the, the really fucking thin ones the ones that don't break your fall worth a shit See if I can find one. Because that is effectively what's on top of it. It, it it's not even it's not even that. It's it's less than that. I'm trying to find um I'm trying to find a good fucking thing of it. But yeah, there you go. That's that's the wood that they put on a ring. Yeah, there you go. You 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 can see a good break, a slightly shitty breakdown of it there. Not true. That is not true, Dragon. When you see some, when you see someone jumping. When you see someone grabbing for a choke slam, they're assisting to get up in the air for maximum fucking height. Be on. You gotta be ready and you gotta be on. It's a lot of preparation, and I think a lot of it is just mental preparation. But it, do but it doesn't help. And th yes, they had a microphone underneath the mat. It's a boom mic, so it, it reverberates throughout the arena. That's all that that's there for. Situation. I mean, I could stand here and punch you, and nobody looks right. But if I lean my body all the way back and roll my body through it, then the punch looks that more devastating. It's all in my body language or my facial expressions that I'm cranking on. And Turner interrupted the count there. Not again! Taylor again. That should be all right there. This point, that's the like the ropes are an education all in themselves. Yes, the ropes can bite you. One, two, yes, it's over. You smell what the rock is No, 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 no. It's not to make it sound more more painful. It's it's so. It's so that the, you can hear it in the cheap seats, all the way in the nosebleeds. That's that's basically what it's there for. Our first day of actual professional wrestling school, and um, I'll tell you, my ass is like on fire. I'm in some real pain. Oh, oh my God! And for all you people who don't believe that it's real, let me tell you something. It's real, all right. I'll show you the bruises later. That was more electrifying than, than any fight I've ever been in in my life, and I've been in a few. That was like so intense. It was fun. Oh, it was great, man. I hit the best time of my life. I was doing what I love to do. Basically, I am. I'm wearing a Speedo for my nuts, because my nuts, I'll tell you right now, my nuts hurt more than anything else in the world. Bam! That's how it feels when you go over and like one of them snap suplexes or something, and your nuts hit your leg, and it's it's very painful. Try to look out of shape. That that is also something that's not very brought up much, but that is also true. That is also incredibly true, because your body is suddenly coming to a screeching halt after all of that momentum. 
Yes, if you are a male, your nuts just clap right down. It's a weird thing to bring up, but it is, it is true. Like, it, it, it sounds stupid, but that, that actually is a, that is a problem. That's why, that's why you see very, okay, for one, that's why a lot of pro wrestlers wear cups, for obvious fucking reasons. And it's also why many of them were, obviously, the, the tights, obviously. It, it's actually to help with that problem. It keeps them nice and snug. <laughs> Sorry. I don't think I'm out of shape. In three years, we spent more time together than most people that are married. We wake up, we go eat, we go work out, we go to the building, we do our show. Everywhere we go, we're together. We don't get a chance to go to very romantic dinners or go on a vacation. We're together, but we're together in the business. <laughs> yeah, baby. I think that has happened. That's the worst thing. I think that has happened on the independent scene. I think I heard a couple of years ago, like in the grapevine, that a, a um, an independent wrestler actually legitimately busted one of his nuts because of a, of something going wrong. But that scar reminded me of how stupid a human could be. Welcome to Atlas Kitchen. What we have here is a nice big old plate of meat that we're going to barbecue up. Mmm, that smells good. One thing about being at the top all the time, you get uh, too much too soon. I felt that I was uh, invincible. I figured I could do what I want to do and um, get away with it. I was taking, uh, uh, at that time, what they called Diana balls, the steroids, and, you know, and, and that messed me up. And then I smoked some weed before and other stuff, and none of it agreed with me. Each time I did something, it messed me up, and it caused me to miss a show. So this happened several times in my career. So finally, the promoter got to the place <clears throat> that he couldn't ha he couldn't use me. In the meanwhile, you got bills coming in, you got uh, expenses to take care of, you got a family to worry about, you know, and, and you, you know, and, and your life is just falling apart. But I should have known better. I mean, I was grown, you know, I wasn't a kid. I was told, leave the steroids alone and you'll be all right. Well, I didn't listen. I said, I'm grown. I'm 280 pounds. I could bench press 600 pounds, and I could whoop your butt, and I do what I want to do. That was the old Tony Atlas. Come on, I want to go, honey. I really do. Because you, you know I'm not good at the guys. No, no, <laughs> come on. Now, you'll be all right. Be good. I love you. I love you, too. Be careful. Okay. okay? Goodbye. Oh. I'll lock the door. Just be careful, man. And don't be goofy. We are fine. I think I think it's great that she left finally. And I feel like I'm an adult. <laughs> so I'm happy she's gone. Well, I'm not happy that she's gone, but I am happy that she's gone and, and it, it's time for me to do my own thing. Three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. Here we go. Five. Six. I got tired in about two minutes. Then I figured I was in the best shape of my life. And then I get in the ring with guys that eat bologna and cheese and drink beer and fop all day long. And they was beating the hell out of me out there. I got hit over the head with a chair and it, and it knocked me out cold. You're just a total wreck all day. First time I wrestled, I had two matches in one night in front of about uh, 15 people for probably less money than that. And, uh, 
Lost both of them. But first time I was in the ring, I was like, oh my god, you know, it's like I'm gonna be doing what my like heroes are doing, you know. It says, GQ, go get your gear. You're you're on next. You know, you're you're wrestling a girl. I said, okay, no big deal. So I get back there to introduce me to her. I shake her hand. Uh, you know, he says, now this is our first match, GQ. I said, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, I'll just talk it over with, with her in the ring. We'll just do it out there. He says, oh no, she don't understand, brother. She's deaf and she doesn't speak. And I went, oh my God. Oh, it was scary. I mean, it was, you know, there's a couple of hundred people and all eyes are on you. Because she couldn't, we, she couldn't cooperate. She couldn't hear what I was saying. So I just went out there, beat the holy pepper, picked her up for a slam, just laid on my back and held her on top of me and said, you're, you're, you're winning tonight because my, my car is going to That is how it happened, buddy. I, there's no way she could have beat me legitimately. I can tell you that right now. Yeah, so, you know, and, and I just took this reputation like my first seven or eight matches were all against women. Boom, man, let's go. Look at how, look at this. No, no, no. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't high. hold your breath. The feet are high. Yeah, don't. People can't believe this little thing. You know, again, the illusion. Accentuate the movement. Okay, here we go. That's better. That's a boy. That's it. That's it. Good. That's it. There you go. Way to go. And man. you have to look at that. You have to, to do there this go. That's it. Good, for everybody with everybody right. in the class. Good. He was wanting you to stay, Sheila. That's it. There you go. That's a baby. Breathe. Breathe. There you go. Don't hold your breath. Breathe, Matt. Breathe. That's it. No. Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Kick. Be sure to feed us some. You're almost halfway there. Come on, Matt. Come on. Let's go. You got him, baby. Whoa, you okay? You all right? Come on, Matt. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Let's go. There you go. Come Imagine on. just doing that. This is a drill. Come on. Come on. One more. You got it, baby. There you go. That Italian behind is getting a little heavier. <laughs> all right. Good stuff. Good first effort, man. Good first effort. Ready? Are you for it? We should do this every day. You're right. This is what we do in fighting. You all right? Dude, he fucking flubbed out of that. Now here is a picture of me that bring back dark days. When this picture was taken, I was the ICW champion. The reason I had that long robe on is because I was ashamed to show my body at that time. They had deteriorated so much for all the abuse that was taken. When I left that arena that night, I fell asleep in the park because I had no place to go. And I was the champion. <laughs> when I was here, they used to have drug houses, crack houses. The house I used to stay at, they don't tore it down. It was so infected, they had to get rid of it. I couldn't believe that I ever stayed in that place. It was like 10 people living in one apartment, and we all slept in one bedroom, all on top of each other. I didn't have a penny to my name. I woke up one morning, and I started thinking, I said, Tony, you was in Madison Square Garden a year ago with 22,000 people screaming your name, USA, USA. Now you're laying here in a crack house. I said, well, I can't live like this no more. So I pulled out a razor blade and I sliced my wrist. One of the girls that was in the, in the bed with me, she jumped up and went and got the police. They took me to the hospital. And then about a month later, Vince McMahon called me back. Yeah. And that was the turnaround of my life. And I went to the WWF, I wrestled in Saba Simba for eight months and I made enough money to get myself a new star. You know, I'm still struggling trying to make it, but at least Vince gave me a, a star. I like that scar, because that scar reminded me of how stupid a human could be. Yeah. Yeah. My ultimate goal, <laughs> to be rich and famous. <laughs> get on the cover of TV Guide. <laughs>
make it to one of the big federations, WWF, WCW. World Wrestling Federation of the World Championship Wrestling. The big two, either WCW or the WWF. I wanted to be rich and famous ever since I was little and I didn't really care how it happened. Be on top of the world, right? The champion and all that. Being happy, doing what you're doing and doing it well and being content with that. For sure. Just like, you know, continue doing good here on the independence right now. And then hopefully maybe, you know, maybe someday, you know, get to one of the big leagues, you know, WWF, WCW, you know, but I know I'll have to work on my physique, whatever. I would like to step back in that WWF ring just one time. Just one time. We get to have the yeah. rush. But you're always chasing there is the there is dark sides to pro wrestling, unfortunately. I bet you I'd be pretty good at that. Pretty athletic. I used to bowl a little or something. You know, I think they can just run in the ring and be a wrestler, and it's, it's so much more than that. Hey, Sammy. How you doing? All right, let's get this show on the road. Man, you'd lose weight doing this kind of shit because of all the drills. You'd be sweating your ass off. Nice, you guys. I'm good. We're just watching documentaries. I've never met somebody that can train as focused or hard as China does. She's, she's a 200 pound woman and she's all muscles. She's gonna be a lot bigger than your average guy. I really enjoy lifting weights, but I don't like this. Man, it's a fucking shame, man. I never really thought about it like, oh my god, she's bigger than me, or oh my god, she's stronger than me, or I wish she's not. Uh, but I never really, uh, it was never really a factor for me. Um, I just saw her as a, as a person and got to know her personality. And to be quite honest, I'm impressed and proud of everything she does. I, I watch her in the gym and see people just, you know, giving her the oh my god, and I just, I'm proud of her. It makes me laugh. I got a thought on that. If you're not wrestling for the WWF, if you're not wrestling for the WCW, then you're what you call a weekend warrior, which means you go and do the independent show. Hey, I got a theory about that. Yeah, keep this in mind as well. Oh, uh, well, China passed away, unfortunately. Uh, like two years, maybe a year or two ago. Sullivan against Kalua, Dark Angelo against Steve King. Okay, well, we can't. That's got to be it. That's that's no ten. more matches. That's ten I don't matches. care who's here. We can't put any more in. Mm -hmm. Is this a dressing room? Yeah. Hey, hey, man, you can't say me up. I never got a hold of. I could never get a hold of Brandy this week. You're talking retro. Right? No, no, I, I talked to him. What's the finish? He grabbed you from behind, kicked you in the chest, kicked you in the chest, go for the third one. Right. Ball, you duck, and you win by DQ. Okay. So there's something that isn't explained during this. Hey guys, guys, when you're up there, please do not use the word suck, okay? Uh oh. What? Hey, we're at a we're at a boys and girls club. Let's not say suck. It was an it was a drug over it was an accidental drug overdose. And. No, she died five years ago. She... Jesus, it doesn't feel like five years ago that she died.
Wrestling has been my life dream. I just couldn't see myself doing anything else. I'm really excited about my first match. Now it's finally coming. I'm really getting focused and excited for it. You should listen to the referee's count. He, the referee's got a rhythm. Like, I back you in the corner, and he says one. I step back and nail you on two, right? Gut you on three and give you a break. Then I've got that shoulder and that arm, and I can whip you. This is the part that's not glamorous or fun at all. Taking tons of bumps at the school. That's just basically paying your dues. Makes you realize how bad you want to be a wrestler. My life on the independent circuit, well, yeah. I spend a lot of time in my car, I actually sleep in my car sometimes, you know, and I, I mean, I kind of sleep amongst the bags of Doritos and, you know, empty bottle cans and stuff. The money is not anywhere near. Okay. He's not a main focus, but there's going to be a lot. There might be some wrestling fans who watch this who know who he is. Fucking Shark Boy. Shark Boy has been going for fucking years. Like, Years. Here's the interesting thing about Shark Boy, which is quite fucking fascinating. So Shark Boy copyrighted his name years ago. I think back in the late nineties, early two thousands. Give me a shell, yeah. <laughs> right. Anyway, so he copyrighted his name. What's interesting about this is you probably are familiar with the game, with the movie Shark Boy and Lava Girl. Thing is, this shark boy owned the copyright to it, to the name. So they paid him, so the studio had to pay him. They, 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 they had to fucking pay him money, a lot of money. So much money that he basically held his hands up and says he didn't need to fight, uh, wrestle on the independent circuit anymore. Near the abuse you, you put through your body. For example, uh, I, I worked on a show last week where I, uh, I was super flexed and uh, sort of messed up my tailbone, and the pay that I got for the match wasn't even enough to cover the trip to the emergency room. There's no retirement. There's no no benefits whatsoever. The wrestlers, most wrestlers don't even have insurance. Long car rides suck. They'll promise you an amount of money. You'll get probably the half of it, or maybe you'll get nothing. It happens a lot. What about Alice Blake? She going to be here tonight? Well, when I walked into the dressing room, I couldn't even see the walls for so many wrestlers. Some of the guys they hear about the show, and they would just show up, just hoping that they would get put on a car. We have 42 wrestlers. I basically told Tony some of these people couldn't be on the show because we didn't have the money to pay them to be on the show. A lot of them guys, they would get 20. Yeah, yeah, hold on. In June 8, 2005, Roll, fil uh, Roll filed a lawsuit against Miramax Films claiming that the Miramax release of the events of Shot Boy and Lava Girl and 3D infringed upon his copyright and demanding any money profits and advances wrongfully gained. In 2005, it emerged that Miramax had attempted to have the case dismissed in addition to requesting that the court nullify Rawls' uh, copyright uh, trademark on the basis that plaintiff is a male whose services are rendered only when he is wearing a costume depicted as sharp boy attributes. In 2007, the suit was settled in an, uh, for an undisclosed amount. Ha! Yes! Fuck you! Fuck you, Miramax Films! Oh, that is beautiful! Oh, that is fucking beautiful! Oh, what? that makes me so fucking happy! <laughs> So the, I basically told Tony some of these people couldn't be on the show because we didn't have the money to pay them to be on the show. A lot of them guys, they would get 20 bucks, some would get $30, some would get 50 Outside of your main event guys like King Kong Bundy, the highest paid guy on the show get $100. I had two people sitting in the dressing room that I booked myself and I felt that they, I was responsible for them to wrestle that night and to get paid. So it's, I pulled myself out and put them in. 
Now he's all mad at me because I paid the boys off. Of course we were angry at Tony at that because it's my money, I am the promoter, and we just have so much money allocated per show, we have to stay within that budget. I don't feel that no man should drive for 10 hours, be away from his family for the whole weekend, and not even get paid for it. There's a lot more to this story. I'll explain later. Remind me about the uh, about the uh, independent three-day show. Tell me, Kurt, tell me, remind me to tell you. Downshift, Matt, downshift. Can you breathe all right? It'd be $5. <laughs> Everything hurts. I think my ego hurts the most because I thought I'd be like this in here and I, I suck. I feel like I'm an idiot. Uh, we don't do a yeah, there's we Tony. Do one week we're playing a doctor, and another week we're playing a secret agent. We are a hunter in China. When we leave the ring, we're still a hunter in China. Physically, we look the same. We can't hide. Can I get another one for her, sir? We're a hunter in China 24 hours a day. People view us as that. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome. Yeah. So if he's on TV, when we... Uh, go out to eat at one o'clock in the morning, every drunk person in the world still considers him an asshole. And, you know, it's, it, exactly, it makes it very difficult. You cannot separate yourself from your character on TV. Uh-oh, Heartland Wrestling. Not bad, how about you? Wow, what's happened with young Matt from Chicago? Young Matt has been to one training station in 10 days. Um, on an hotel room. Which I hate. I can't stand this room. Uh, I'm lonely. I'm bored. I really miss my family and friends. He is not disciplined. He is not structured. Uh, he's pretty much, you might call, loose cannon. Man, I missed one class. I, I called in before I missed it. He's bitching and bitching and bitching about it. Matt, I think. Uh, like a lot of young men, has a high testosterone level. The young ladies are an important part of his life. Since I've been here, I'm a, I'm a slob, but uh, seven women. So who the man? Who the man? It seems like this has been a great conversation piece for him to talk to people. I can slip that into my, my uh, the way I talk to the girls that I'm in wrestling school. And uh, sometimes you'll get a negative reaction out of it and you gotta really turn around the situation. But if you get a fan, if you get somebody that's a fan, you're hooked, dog. You're hooked, you don't need to talk too much. In plain, simple English, Matt is spoiled and has the work ethic of a dead man. He's Ooh. totally f convinced that I'm going out every night and getting laid every night and drinking every night. And it ain't happening. I'll go out maybe three times a week. Maybe four. But you know, for somebody that comes from Chicago that parties every day of his life, that ain't nothing. Three days a week is minimal. Still interested in Matt's story? If you are gonna become a large star in this business, you, in a lot of ways, give up your life. You trade in your normal everyday life, your normal personality to be in this business. It's an it's a exchange you make because when you become a big star forever from then on, you are going to be, to a large percentage of this world, that person. Um, and, and even to yourself in a lot of ways. But yeah, that, um, when you're uh, years over, Bubba Rogers. It's very difficult to walk away from that, to change what you've been for years and years and years. Uh, but yeah, I mean, 
Matt's outcome is probably not going to be uh, shocking. I go to the second street, which is Pine Street. I make a left. Right. Then I go to the traffic light, and I turn right onto Manchester Street. Right. Okay. Okay, did I just miss the damn road now? What are you looking for? Which God damn, fuck it. Uh, it is before GPS was a thing. What well, main, main stream thing. And that I think was I, Willard Street and Perry Street. I think I passed it. It's confusing how they wrote this. I keep thinking I'm looking for 2nd Street, but I'm actually looking for Pine Street, which was the 2nd Street. Thank you, sir, very much. Sure. What's your name? Yeah. It's, it's very difficult to have a normal life outside of our business. Thank you, sir. All right. You know, when you go home, you, you tend to not have a lot of friends. You lose contact with a lot of people because you're on the road so much. You know it's late when you're the only one at the airport. Jesus. Imagine that. Being there so late, you're the only one at a fucking airport. Like, at the blink of an eye, and I, um, I just worry sometimes so that I dedicate everything to this job, and that maybe, you know, ten years from now, I'm not doing this anymore, and I will have not, you know, gotten married or had kids or done things that normal people do. This is a very short-lived business, and I just sometimes think, you know, that, that day's gonna come for me when I'm gonna plan on being here, but. Mmm, fucking You're just 12 months later. In my life. Oh, and here we go. You're disrupting my business and my life, and that's bullshit. Now, I don't realize you're already telling people you are a wrestler. If I hear you tell somebody that, I'm going to make you prove to them in front of them with me that you're not. You understand me? Okay. Because you're not until somebody makes you a wrestler. You're talking bullshit, plain and simple. And I'm tired of hearing bullshit. You know, the big chains and, and the roll of money may work with some 17-year-old girl. But I'm not a 17-year-old girl. Now, I went down to your room Thursday night and couldn't find you. Someone let me in to leave you a note, which told you to be here Saturday at 1.30 to talk to me. Ken, I was going home for the But you didn't go home for the weekend. But Saturday was the day I was at the But you didn't go home for the weekend. No, I didn't make it home. No, you sure didn't, and you didn't make it here. Now, you've got a problem, and it ain't just your timing. And we both know that. You want me to open my mouth and tell you what that is? That's weed. Matt. Oh, I'll tell you what it is. I've been around the block, son, two or three times. Been there, done that. So don't tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. It won't happen again. Well, you're right, it won't. It won't ever happen again. If you're not here when you're supposed to be here and not here on time, you and I are going to sever this relationship. At what point in your life drugs were a problem? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, in teenager years, yeah. drugs were real big. Um, cocaine, pot, never heroin, uh, ecstasy. For a while there, I was getting out of control, and so I went into a rehab. And I went into this rehab in Florida on the beach. Um, if you can't tell, I really haven't had that hard of a life. You know, people go to rehab, and then I go to rehab on the beach. I get back. Wait a minute, what? Can't wait to hear this. I get back with the old friends and everything, and I don't listen to what they told me, and, and I fucked up again. And, uh... You know, they were looking for total abstinence, and to be honest with you, I'm not. I'm going to go out once in a while. I've learned that I can go out once in a while and drink a beer or two or three if I wanted to and not have to f turn around and go on like a 10-day coke binge, you know. And that's just for me. I'm not telling anybody in the world to do that. I'm just saying it's for me, you know. I'm 24 years old. There's no way I'm giving up the bar scene. Not right now. There's no way. Yep. Actually, I think no. Oh no. No, no, no. No. That is, that is not worst case scenario for Matt. I will, I, we will get into that. We will get into that. But yes. He ended up getting he ended up getting placed in rehab. 
And funny enough, weed is not that big of a problem anymore. We understand, everybody understands weed now. Near enough everybody understands weed. Most places it's legalized. But I've always turned around and said, you want to, uh, you want to partake in the, in the grass? That's all, that's all for you. I'd be a hypocrite not to, t to tell you that. But always, always put your fucking commitments first. You go to pro, you go to wrestling school, you make sure you go to wrestling school. And he never returned to wrestling school. Yeah, uh, James canceled the show of the frickin' I got a phone call, and it was 6 o'clock. I saw it was James, so I said to myself, well, that have to be bad news, because ain't nobody gonna be calling you at 6 o'clock in the morning unless it's bad news. He said the show was canceled. He don't call everybody. He don't cancel everything, and there's nothing that I could do about it. Tony said we needed about $500 more to do the show, and I wasn't about to give that boy $500 more to run any show. Hi, brother. Sorry. Right, man, don't worry. God almighty. So you have you guys come all the way up here. Chief spent money. He left his family. You could have worked somewhere else. Yep. I could have went to Texas for Mike. Had a personal appearance from me. <laughs> Called me on the phone. I said, Mike, I'm booked on the 10th. Right now, today, I could be in Dallas, Texas, making a payday. You know, this is, that's what this business and sports all about sometimes. You know, you got the show goes on. You just can't cancel it because something's happening. Because you don't like somebody. About anything. I mean, we're all here, all professionals. You know, we pay this, we do this for a living. We don't need to have this canceled out. We need to walk home with our wilds empty. I don't understand it. I got a call from my wife. She said this, James called her up and said everything was canceled. I know. I'm sitting in Portland expecting to work tonight. No, I ain't got crap. Sorry, boys. The rest of you, sorry, boys, you didn't get paid. This isn't the first time that wrestlers have not been paid. They kind of understand that process. This guy's a prick, by the way. They say a wrestler is self-employed. That's bullshit. When the promoter had all control, he got total control. I'm Shark Boy. My ring name is Athena. And my little slogan thing is, this is what a goddess looks like. Was a uh, piranha that I started out as. The diva. Delicious day fish is licking the competition. Matt Anthony McMurphy, I'm a taxi cab driver. The, uh, Billy Gunn is really just a, a, my attitude. It's, it's the cocky, arrogant, think I'm all that, great athlete. I'm a spoiled little rich brat named Aston Augustus Ambrose Esquire. Helena Heavenly. Apocalypse and Armageddon. <laughs> How did you come up with your character? That is, you, oh, okay, I'm gonna fucking say it. Right, this is, is the truth. Is the truth. This is so fucking indie. This is so fucking indie. Like when you when when people use indie as a fucking derogative, they're talking about these guys. They are clear ripoffs of Animal and fucking Hawk. Bruce Esquire. Helena Heavenly. Hold on. Apocalypse. Hawk Apocalypse and Animal Geddon. Dude, that is just fucking awful. Fire. Helena Heavenly. I fucking hell. But it's like not real, right? I don't have a character. I'm just myself. I mean, I came to the I came to the arena dressed like this. I uh, kid USA. I'm a kid and I'm from USA, so they put it together. I don't have a character. I'm Amanda Storm. I'm Amanda Storm in real life, and what you see is what you get. Some of the classmates rib me every once in a while, like Les says, they call me Opie sometimes just because of my uh, young-looking appearance and young. my haircut. I guess it's just like. There was this idea floated around uh, being this uh, paper boy and coming out to the ring on a bicycle. And what can you really say uh, except the, the I don't I don't really feel comfortable with it. But uh, you know whatever Les wants to do, you know I'll do it because I just want to be out there wrestling. I know uh, one of the nicknames that you ran by me, somebody ran by me, was Rapid Fire. Yeah. 
I just thought rapid fire was just kind of a catchy nickname. So a, a speedy person, speedy, a person right. who's who is quick, quick and, and athletic. And, yeah. And I know is, is something that's been run run by us both is the newspaper boy thing, right? Yeah. What I was wondering if you were up for the idea of possibly a compromise someplace between rapid fire and the newspaper boy. Uh, what I'm thinking is rapid delivery. If you came to the ring and your out, outward attire was more like, uh, I hate to use the name Opie because, <laughs> you know, because we've teased you about you know, having that look, but, uh, but more along that line, right? Yeah. And maybe with that newspaper bag, but then once you, you took maybe the jeans or the cutoffs or whatever it was off and you had these sleek, fancy tights and then the performance spoke for itself. Yeah, I could see something like that. I come out in a hat and still be oiled up, and I just have that sure. bag on me. And as soon as I get to the ring, I just throw that off, and I get right up in that ring, and I'm all business. And yeah, exactly. gimmicks dead on arrival. It's kind of like a Superman going to the uh, the phone booth thing, right? So let's say if the nickname were Rapid Delivery. Have you got any ideas for names? Ricky Fury, Rob Faith, Ronnie. This name should Fury, sound familiar. Farley, Rory Fargo. Rory it kind of has a, a strong. It can sort of have a strong. Uh, sound to it, doesn't it? Roar, yeah. you know, more than, you know, it's not it's not too soft. Rapid delivery, Rory Faith. Rapid delivery, Rory Ferris. Maybe Rory Fox is good. Rory, Rory Fox, I like that better than Ferris, maybe. Rory yeah. Fox. Rapid delivery, Rory Fox. What do you think? Rory Fox, dude's still wrestling on the Independence Day. He spent some time in, uh, I think it was uh, WWE CW, if anybody remembers that. Spent some time in TNA, but the dude's still going. Like, dude, dude, Rory Fox is still going to dead. Like, and this is from like 1999, 2000. Give me a second. Let me, let me uh, find out because I'm sure he had been. Well, this is like I said. This is more. This is more of a to learn about. To learn about it because it's a documentary now. I'm a paper boy. Yeah. James didn't call you. You know he canceled this, right? Does the wrestlers know yet? Did you tell the wrestlers? Yeah. Yeah, they all left. Went home this morning. <sighs> Did he pay to rent this building? Because I could get some wrestlers here tonight. Because if I could pay for the ring and the building, I, I pay. I do it out of my pocket. The whole total is what? 350 for the building. Because what I got to do, I got to get on the horn and see if I can get enough wrestlers up here to do a show. Now we're going to do some rolling. Don't close the doors yet. Who got a cell phone? Cell phone. I got a cell phone? Yeah. Love Tony. Yeah. Uh, James canceled the show of the freaking. <laughs> yeah. The ring is here. All I need is wrestlers. You're okay, buddy. Probably the best thing ever happened to us. Maybe. See, I hide money for myself sometimes so I don't spend it. That's what I'm looking for, to make sure I ain't got no hidden money here. Oh, that's a bill. Oh, none there. None there. This is for emergency. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's 180. Plus 50 is $230. That's all I got. <laughs> I don't have a bank account, so I can't go to the bank and get nothing. <laughs> so here's 230. Okay. So you could go ahead and put the ring up. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, and hopefully we get enough in tonight where you get the rest of your money. No problem. Okay, but there will be a show tonight. Okay. He's paying for all of this out of his own pocket. Okay. But, okay. So for a little context, th this needs to kind of be explained because they don't they, they don't kind of because it's in the documentary style they don't exactly show every unique de uh, in your detail but tony atlas went on to explain that he he was the booker for this wrestling promotion and he had booked three days of wrestling um which i believe this would be day three i believe 
he was he was told to book all three days a bunch of independent wrestlers you know when he said that he couldn't see the walls that's because a load of independent wrestlers had found out that the show that show was going to be um um was going to be on mtv like mtv had come to record it so a lot of independent wrestlers showed up wanting to wrestle to get on tv and a lot of them turned around and said that um they they do it for free so he booked all three days he'd done all of that got some of these guys on the show working for free um and unfortunately the the promoter just kept interfering and wanted to get king kong bundy on the show and king kong bundy according to what tony atlas has said would have taken uh, would have taken up a third of the budget which is fucking an astonishing So because of all of that, all of that, and every, pretty much all of it going to shit, he basically fucked Tony over here. Canceled, he canceled the event, leaving all of the wrestlers who were coming. Uh, he didn't. The promoter canceled the event and didn't tell anybody. He didn't tell the wrestlers who were showing up. He didn't tell um, the ring crew. Well, I'll, I'm explaining. The promoter cancelled the event, didn't tell any of the wrestlers, didn't tell the fucking uh, ring, uh, the guys who were bringing the ring to set up, because the guys who bring the ring and set it up are not part of the company. They're, in, they're an independent uh, contractor. He didn't tell anybody aside from Tony Atlas and left it to Tony to tell fucking everybody. The wrestlers showed up and Tony Atlas had to fucking tell everybody. The, the show's been cancelled. And now Tony is basically scrounging all of the money he can get together just so the show can go on like he's paying out of his own pocket to have this event go on I got wrestlers on the way up here too. God darn it. James called the commission and told the commissioner to, to cancel everything so it looked like it won't be a show. So I just... Now for extra context, in many, in many states there is an athletics commission. Uh, like I'm sure, you, I'm sure infamously everybody knows about the Nevada State Athletic Commission. There are commissions in many cities for wrestling as well, and unfortunately, you need a you need a uh, promoter's license to host a wrestling event. Uh, specifically in this state, I believe. I don't know if it's in every state, but in this state, you need a promoter's license to put on wrestling shows. And the original promoter caught wind of what Tony was trying to do and called the fucking athletic commission and called the uh, the state wrestling commission and ratted Tony out and now they're coming to shut it down I tell guys on the phone to ah oh, jeez Do you have any idea what you want? Yeah, actually, I have a idea here. Okay. Something with red and yellow, maybe some stars down the side here, and just have a rapid delivery on the back. Okay. Yeah. What letter did we have? A D. Yeah, that kind of. I like that. That's just a little bit of an arch. You like it arched? Okay. I don't believe he is. I think he's still alive. Sadly. This is this is pretty cool. Do you have any more sharks? How much is it? How do those feel? Do they feel too tight? No, it feels just about right. Tight like the way it should be and not loose. 
to get you more in the mood now. Oh, yeah. Uh, Just need my wrestling it. boots. Okay. Oh. Hello? Yes, sir. What I'm trying to do is see if I can get license just to do the show for the night. I don't think I can license. If you can help me out in any kind of way, it'd be appreciated. Because I... Okay, sir. He's trying to get a license. Because you're coming down, there'll be a Dunkin' Donuts on your left-hand okay. side that's being repaired. Okay, remodeled. You can't miss it. Bye-bye. The commissioner is on his way. Okay, thank you. What is Joey Gamash number? Joey Gamash. His father is a promoter. Yeah, he is. Hey, Marsha, could you look up a number on the Joey Gamash? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Gamash. Yes, sir. He gave up his license. Oh. <laughs> dead end, dead end, dead end. We gotta sit down and talk. Okay. Let's look at Tony's face. No go. No go. It was a hang up. No promoter, no promoter's license. They couldn't grant a temporary one or anything? No. No. They'll show. No go. No go. It was his first time. He was really looking forward to it. He was looking forward to seeing Tony and the rest of the wrestling. We have something next Okay. Okay, guys, I'm going to take off now, y'all. I'm sorry. Hey, You've been wonderful. Yeah. And I want to bring back some honesty to this business. Hi. Come on, I'll give you a picture, baby. I know that's probably something that may never happen, but I'm going to at least put my piece into this puzzle. Hey, Alice, it's quarter of seven. The uh, commissioners are on their way. They're going to shut your ass down. And I want to tell you something. When it's all said and done, I'm going to let you lower than will. And if you want to... I just want to bring back some civility to this business. You can go fuck yourself. And if you want to get into a legal battle, you better have a very, very... Do you fucking hear that? He wants to bring civility. Just the, the irony, I love, I fucking love, I fucking love. Okay, Nurgle, you wanted to know his name? Hold on. Some honesty to this business. Come on, I'll give you a picture, baby. I know that's probably something that may never happen, but I'm going to at least put my piece into this puzzle. There's his name. There's his name. All right. But listen, the what I love about this documentary is the fact that even the guys behind the documentary know this guy's a piece of shit because of how because of how they frame this. I'm sure you've got his name just for but listen, listen. Listen to what the promoter says. He wants to bring civility back to pro wrestling. Then they juxtapose it with him telling Tony to go fuck himself, and if he wants to take in in and if he wants to take it to a legal battle, he can fucking try. Listen. I just want to bring back some civility to this business. You can go fuck yourself, and if you want to get into a legal battle, you better have a very, very. What else could happen to old Atlas tonight, huh? You better have a very. Yeah. It's the big match. Tonight's the big night. Just what, about two and a half hours. Ooh, piece away. of crap. I've been waiting for this my whole life, and it's just about here. The other main event is uh, myself and The Rock in what is called a fully loaded strap match. Um, we're going to be 
connected by the wrist by a, about a 10 foot piece of leather strap. When the decision came down with the EWA to uh, eliminate me, right then and there I said, well, it's Tony, you're going to have to think of something real fast. You're not getting no younger. You have to do something to get your name out there. Is Sandy in here? Sandy, are you decent? Uh, mm. So what we're going to do tonight, you just throw them punches, you know, you do your kick and all the other stuff. Legitimate. Yeah, right. legitimate punches, you know, you just nail the hell out of it. Don't worry about how hard it is. about doing a shoot match, just the idea of getting punched in the face, you know, it's kind of make you think. I've been thinking about this for three days now, you know, trying to get my head mentally ready for it, you know? I can tell you to relax and you're not going to, so <laughs> I'm just spitting my wheels. But the point is, be sure to listen, okay? Be sure to listen. And if you don't hear him, tell him you don't hear him. You know, I'm obviously going to get on the mic and make fun of you at your first match, blah, blah, blah and then lock up with you. We do something, blah, blah, blah. Say we, I come in, I hit you or whatever, and I go back to him, I hit him, and like, a couple drop kicks. Just relax, man, and have fun. I mean, that's what it's all about, right? Yeah. Yeah. He makes me look bad. I'm going to something to beat the shit out of him. It's time to forget everything we talked about and just beat the hell out of him. It doesn't matter if the outcome is predetermined. What matters is we go out there and entertain him better than anybody else on this planet. Where you want to be. Just to be in this deal is big enough. To be on top of this deal is unbelievable. And that's where I'm headed. Man, that gimmick is fucking dead. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is why stripper pants were invented. No, they know. Listen. I'm going to say it right now. So, obviously, Tony's in a shoot fight where the punches and that are legitimate. L and, you can, and listen to... Listen to the strikes to Tony's head. This is brutal.
So yeah, you can tell the contrasting difference. Again, it's showing the three stages. Before the glory, during the glory, after the glory. Take a look at Tony's face. You can see the fucking swelling on his face. This ain't gonna be the last one we do. It's just the beginning. We gotta take it all the way up there in the East Coast. The kids, they really supported me. They came around and slapped hands. I thought maybe they might be hesitant to do that because of this whole paper boy thing, but the crowd really, the crowd really took to it, and I was really surprised. Steve continues to train uh, to wrestle in. I can't pronounce that. Oh, he is. He's shaken from it. When I got to Cincinnati, it was a lot harder than I thought it would be. You know, I went in there the first day wanting to be, you know, God in wrestling. And I found out it's really hard. It ain't easy. Uh, you know, you kind of feel alone at certain times, like when you're frustrated and, and, and get scared and you're in a different place. And drugs are just an old friend, you know? It's like having your best friend back. I don't have any complaints. You know, I've seen a lot of bad and I've seen a lot of good. You know, I just thank God that I got the opportunity to be Tony Atlas. Most people don't get a chance to live their fantasies. I was able to live, man. Because he refused to wrestle on the Concord show, Tony was barred from wrestling in the states of New Hampshire for one year. Uh, I don't, I think that is, because he mentioned they had to take the fights up. I think he refused to take another one of those shoot fights on a Concord show. I'm not entirely sure. But, slightly happy ending, though it didn't work out. Main granted Tony's application for a promoter's license. What I'm gonna do next is um, do what I have to do to become a professional wrestler. Why do you want to still do that after all that? Because it's still in my heart. I still feel it here. I don't want to try it. I think a dream's worth everything. You know, even if you try to succeed in your dream and not make it, I think it's still worth everything. I think that you have it innate feeling inside of you that you know that you were meant to do this. If you got the dream, I mean, once it's in you, it's, it's, it's hard to say no. Anybody out there that's trying to do it is damn sweet when you get there, so keep trying. Ready? Ready, let's go. Right, so who would like a little bit of uh, where are they now?
Right, so, Tony Atlas, unfortunately, his promo- I do believe he still has a promoter's license, but unfortunately his shows didn't go so well, but positive news, Tony ended up having another run uh, in the WWF, uh, WWF, then the WWE, as the manager for Mark Henry, the world's strongest man, during his amazing fucking, like, one of the highlights of WWE's ECW run when Mark Henry was ECW champion. And Tony was fan-fucking-tastic and got paid well, from what I heard. Okay. Uh, Triple H would now would then go on to obviously become a fucking 15-time world champion. Unfortunately, he left China for Stephanie McMahon and is now the uh, CFO of the World Wrestling of World Wrestling Entertainment. Right now, this is uh, this is where it gets dark. This is where it gets rather dark. China, unfortunately, in I believe 2000 2001 would be released from the WWE, WWF. And unfortunately, through a combination of drugs, bad life choices, and severe depression, would end up getting into porn, and then eventually, unfortunately, overdose, accidentally overdosing on drugs in 2016. Wait, no, 2000, 2015, 2016. I think it was 2016. Um... On a on a upbeat note, uh, Les Thatcher, the uh, wrestling trainer that you saw, is still uh, is still kicking strong at the sprite age of eighty years old, and I and I believe he is still teaching wrestling. Uh, Matt, the, uh, the, the little Italian who could, I believe is currently in jail for armed robbery. Yeah, he, <laughs> it didn't go well for him. That is, uh, that's, that is why I mentioned, uh, that, that's, that's where I said you shouldn't root for him. Yeah, Matt would end up committing uh, grievous acts. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Now, like I said, there's one thing I. Yeah, give me a moment. I think I found it. Um. Hold on, give me a second. Yep, there you go. Bell was set at a quarter of a million Thursday for a man who was paroled late last month and accused of trying to rob two businesses and a bank in a week in the loop, police said. Matthew A. T Taglia... Bought it, appeared for the bond hearing Thursday afternoon in Leighton Criminal Court Building. And this was in 2015. Now, wait a minute, Matt! No! No! Ah, yeah, hold on. I believe he's still. Yep. Yeah. He is still in custody. You got three years. There he is. Um, 
But there's something that I wanted to uh, point out during that. So it, it's something that's been a, that's been said. I I I I got the impression from watching that that because a lot because it, love is a complicated fucking thing. It really is, and I do feel sorry for China after everything that happened. I really do. I think she took the breakup between her, her and Hunter, or her and Paul Levesque, really fucking hard. But watching that documentary and some other things I've seen, I think Paul really it did actually. He did love, uh, did love her. He did actually love her. Wait, he's in prison for life? Uh, so, yeah, like, I don't, I don't blame, like, I feel sorry for her, but like, oh god, what the hell. But like, I think it was a case of, he did love her, but then he, but then he fell mad, uh, madly in love with Stephanie, if that makes sense. Jesus. Hold on, where did he how did you find out he's in prison for life, Porter? Wait, send wait, send you the link to what? To this? Oh no, that I'll tell you I'll show you later. Yeah, apparently, admission date 2015, projected parole 2016, oh, parole date, he wasn't parole, I don't, uh, projected discharge date 2016, so he was in for three years, that would have been 2019, if you, f if you continue this full sentence. Ah, gotcha. Oh, you got two years, sorry. Wait, the fuck? Two years plus five years? Wait. Oh, oh shit, my apologies. No, okay. So, one moment. Okay, he got sentenced to six years. Six years the Six years here, so that's... Uh, 12 years. Yeah, received, possessed, stole, stolen. Yeah, okay, so we got six, 12 years. Robbery, that is... 19 years. 21 years. 23 years. 26 years in, in prison. He's serving 26 years in prison... At the age of 40, and, no, no, it was actually, yeah, he's older than that. And his admission did, he's still in fucking prison right now. He's still in prison right now. As we speak, as we speak. He is, he is, he is dropping the soap. And the reason I'm confident in saying that is because this fucker is shorter than me. He's five foot nine. This dude five foot nine and heavier than me too. So he really is a little Italian meatball. <laughs> all right well ladies and gentlemen i do hope you all you did all appreciate uh this stream i hope you learned something 
Uh, I hope you did enjoy. I did hope you all enjoy it, both of them. One for the first, the first one as a glimpse back at gaming history in the mid two thousands. He was forty years old when forty to forty one years old when he went into jail, or uh, when he went to prison. He'll be uh, he'll be seven. He'll be over sixty years old when he gets out, if he does not, if he didn't get parole, should I say? Um. But then I also hope you enjoyed the, the little uh, knowledge that you gained about, uh, obviously, the beginning, middles, and ends of pro wrestling. It's not all that dark. Which is interesting, actually, because um, the Tony Atlas story you guys saw, the, the stuff after the glory, um, that is actually believed to have been the basis for the Mickey Rourke movie, The Wrestler, which the, the movie... Um, the wrestler, the Mickey Rourke one. Even if you're not a wrestling fan, I would recommend watching it because it's it's a fantastic draw. It's a fantastic film. It really is. It really is a good film. Film. You don't even need to be a fan. It's just good. All right. But with all that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to sign off. So fucking take care, everybody, and I hope you all have a good weekend.